Hey guys, it's Cece and I got a new camera! Look how nice this picture is. I'm so excited. This is what my videos are gonna look like from now on. With the exception of the few that I already pre-filmed on my phone that have to go up first. Seriously though, I am so, so excited about this. I have had this channel for three and a half years and have never filmed on a, like an actual camera. I've always filmed on my phone. This is the most exciting upgrade for me. But beyond super exciting camera upgrades, today I am here to talk to you about the Queer Lit Readathon, which is happening from December 2nd through December 8th. It is a thing that is happening and it is a week that is supposed to celebrate reading queer books. This is a readathon hosted by Rogan, Kathy, and Adriana and I will leave all three of their channels linked down in the description below. Please, please go and check all of them out. But I have been really, really excited about this readathon because it is going to be a week where I am going to try to get through a lot of books. I have been very excited about this week. There are a lot of different challenges. Actually, there is a full bingo board. Check that out. Isn't it beautiful? I am not going to try to complete every single challenge on this bingo board, but I am going to attempt to get through a lot of them. I want to get one bingo and then I'm going to check off a bunch of other random squares as well. The bingo that I'm going to try to get is the second horizontal row that's right there. Uh, that is the one that I'm for sure going to try to read a book for every single one of those squares, get that bingo covered, and then uh, everything else will be random, basically. So with that out of the way, let's talk about my actual TBR for the week. Well, the first square on the bingo board of my particular bingo is to read a book with a trans spec main character. So any character that falls within the trans spectrum, this includes a variety of identities. I am going to be reading a book with a non-binary main character, and that book is I Wish You All the Best by Mason Deaver. Look at how beautiful it is. So this is a book about a non-binary teen named Ben who comes out to their parents and is kicked out of their home. They are forced to move in with their estranged sister Hannah and Hannah's husband Thomas and Ben only comes out to those two people and their therapist as they start senior year at a new high school. At the school they happen upon Nathan and Nathan sort of takes Ben under his wing and as the friendship between them grows maybe some other things develop as well. I feel like I have watched this book grow for so long. I have watched Mason agonize over it, write it, I have seen so many people read manuscripts and love it, and now I get to hold an arc in my hands. I cannot believe it. This is the most important book on my TBR for the Queer Lit Readathon. This is happening first, this is getting finished first, everything everything, everything, everything. This book is being released on May 28th of 2019, so there's a little longer to wait for other people out there, but you guys... You guys, this is an own voices book with a non-binary main character and a non-binary author. That is absolutely incredible. I can't wait to read this book. The second square on that bingo board is to read a five-star TBR prediction, and for this I'm going to be reading Summer Bird Blue by Akemi Don Bowman. I feel like I have really high expectations for a lot of these books, but in particular I just decided to choose this one as my five-star TBR prediction. Um, it features a character who is trying to figure out where she fits on the asexual and aromantic spectrums. It is also a book about her dealing with grief, specifically the fact that her sister has recently passed away and they were incredibly close. And this main character, Rumi, basically her whole future has been planned around what she is going to do with her sister down the road. And so she's trying to figure out her place in the world without her sister. She's also recently been uprooted to Hawaii, so she's trying to figure out her place while not being in a place that she's called home. So this features an arrow ace protagonist who is also multiracial, um, and I think it's going to break my heart. And it feels like books that break my heart always end up being like five star books, so maybe that's why I chose this one. But also it's got an arrow ace protagonist and I'm into that. The next little square clearly has a few different little question marks next to it, and that is because on this square we are supposed to come up with our own category, and um, I'm not being very creative with my category, I'll be honest. If you have other made-up category ideas, please let me know down in the comments below, and I will adopt that as my new category name. But for this, I'm just going to say that this is queer books that are SFF or sci-fi fantasy books. So for my queer SFF read, I'm going to be reading Girls of Paper and Fire by Natasha Nyan, and this is actually also the Queer Lit Readathon group read. So the group read is not actually something that like you are required to read throughout the week, it's just another option on the bingo square. This is the thing that everyone voted for, and if you don't read it, it's fine. If you do read it, great! 
I am planning to read it. This is set in a world where every year um, eight girls are chosen to serve as paper girls to a demon king, and this is an incredibly demeaning position. They are mistreated. It's a horrific situation, but on this particular year, a ninth girl is chosen as well. So Lei, our main character, is the ninth girl chosen, and she just kind of has a plan to escape the palace. That's her only goal, but along the way she winds up falling for someone as well, and that just kind of complicates the situation. Um, um, Asian sapphic girls escaping from a demon king's palace. That is what I keep saying about this book. That is what I will continue to say about this book because I'm uber excited about it. And the final like required challenge that I will be completing is the graphic novel challenge. For that I am going to be reading Legend of Korra Turf Wars parts 1, 2, and 3. They're all here. All three parts. They're all right here. These are written by Michael Dante DiMartino, one of the creators of Legend of Korra and Avatar The Last Airbender, and it is illustrated by Irene Ko, who does incredible work. I have actually already seen a lot of uh, Korra and Asami's, like, relationship developments over the course of this comic series, mostly because Legend of Korra is so deeply tied into my own experience with my sexuality and recognizing that I was queer. So like, if spoilers came out, I wasn't avoiding them. I would look up pictures of the two of them kissing so I could cry about it, because that's just the connection that I feel to Korra and Asami as characters. But I don't know that much about the plot, which is why I want to read this, and I just barely got these. I just barely went to the store, saw all three, and was like, well, I gotta have those. Um, and these are set immediately following the conclusion of Legend of Korra. It follows two main characters who are both bisexual women of color. And it's gonna be delightful. I guarantee it. So besides those four, like, required things that I want to read, I have a couple of optional books. Books that, if I complete all of these somehow, then I have these three that I can jump into, and they complete more challenges, or they're just other queer books that I couldn't I could not leave off of a TBR. Up to the point that I was filming this video, I was just sitting in front of my TBR shelf trying to narrow down my reading list, and there were some that I couldn't leave off no matter what. So the first of my optional books is Out of the Blue by Sophie Cameron. This is about uh, Fallen Angels. It's also about two girls falling for one another. It was also one of the books on my top uh, queer TBR, my top 20 queer TBR, as was Summer Bird Blue, but this is a 2018 release that I very much wanted to read, and it's really short, which would make it perfect to fit in to this readathon. I also have This is Kind of an Epic Love Story by Corinne Callender. This is also on my top 20 queer TBR, plus I just recently met Corinne, which has like motivated me more to want to read this story, which is about two queer boys who are also people of color falling in love. It's like a rom-com. It's supposed to be. That's what I've heard, that it's adorable. And again, short, so that's helpful. Oh, and the love interest in this book is deaf or hard of hearing. I don't know exactly which label suits him best, but I will find out as I read this book. And I think the love interest in Out of the Blue has cystic fibrosis. I forgot to mention that in terms of representation of the books that I'm including. And the final book on my optional TBR is Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World by Ashley Herring Blake. This is a middle grade book, and up to this point I haven't had any middle grade on the TBR, so this would complete the middle grade square that's on the bingo board. This book is about a young girl who is dealing with the fact that her house was recently destroyed in a tornado, and she's also dealing with the fact that she thinks that she likes girls, so it's dealing with displacement and the fact that she's lost her journal, which was full of drawings of girls holding hands. Really liked uh, the first book that I read by Ashley Herring Blake, so I've been very interested to try her middle grade and then to jump into some of her other books because she does not only have two books. There are many queer books by her out in the world that I would like to read. So those, these are all of the books that I have in my Queer Lit Readathon TBR. Like I said, this covers one, like, bingo, but there are also a lot of other challenges that I'm checking off. There is a challenge to find an ace spectrum protagonist, which is an ace or a romantic spectrum protagonist. That's included. Um, I have own voices books. I have books by authors of color. I also believe Girls of Paper and Fire and Ivy Aberdeen's Letter to the World feature main characters who exclusively experience attraction to women. So that would check off the See Yourself Square for me. But yeah, those are my reading plans. That is what I want to read for the Queer Lit Readathon. Let me know if you are participating down in the comments below. Let me know what you're reading. Um, if you're reading the group pick, if you have made up your own category, let me know anything that you want to down in the comments below about this readathon because I'm super, super excited to participate. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I will see you in another video very soon. Bye!